Oh, good. Hello and welcome. I'm Rima Mektabi coming to you from uh, Davos and we're holding Davos debate uh, for this year. And the topic is the title of the session is Iraq and Syria, the strategic context. How are security emergencies in both countries reshaping the geoeconomic and geopolitics of the region? Allow me to welcome our guests for this session. Uh, Dr. Ayad Alawi, he's the vice president of Iraq and uh, His Royal Highness Prince Turkil Faisal Al Saud. He's the chairman of King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies and the former head of Saudi intelligence. Mr. Roj Shawis, he's deputy prime minister of Iraq and former Peshmerga commander. And Mr. John Baird, he's the minister of foreign affairs of Canada. Welcome to the session. Dr. Alawi, I will start uh, with Iraq, uh, yeah. obviously. Um, so there, there's the coalition and tens of, tens of thousands of uh, Shiite militias backed uh, by Iran and also Shiite fighters called al hashd al-Shabi and the Iraqi army and the Peshmerga, Kurdish Peshmerga. All of these are fighting ISIS in Iraq and one thir nearly third of Iraq is still under the control of ISIS. Why? In English or in Arabic? In English. In Arabic, you can speak in Arabic if you wish so. Actually, the position with ISIS requires coordination with various parties, the Peshmerga, the coalition forces, etc. The required coordination is not available. One adds to the, the situation, the reconciliation with the people in Mosul and the Crete and, and, and other regions occupied by ISIS. This has not been accomplished so far. Hence, uh, the uh, battle for liberation, if I can say, is long and will not be achieved very soon. It will take few months if uh, basic elements are uh, ensured in the face of ISIS. So far, there are two ways to fight ISIS. The first way is a military approach and the attempt to reduce uh, the strength of ISIS. Second, we have to achieve reconciliation amongst Iraqi citizens. In Mosul, we know that uh, there are many politicized laws that try to marginalize uh, many sectors in society. The environment uh, has uh, to be uh, good in order to fight terrorism. We require further coordination efforts. Uh, so far, we, coordination we is not the, sufficient. Uh, the political process uh, and uh, probably the lack of it that led us to this. But uh, uh, Prince Al Faisal, uh, uh, is it? Um, Today, the foreign secretary, the British foreign secretary, said that uh, it's going to take a year, maybe two years, to push ISIS back out of Iraq. Can the world afford another year like this in Iraq? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, first, I would like to ask the colleagues not to give this criminal group the status of a state or of Islam by calling it ISIS, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. But I would rather prefer if the other friends here uh, present so would allow me, I would like to call them. Because this is uh, the name that applies to them. What is happening in Iraq and Syria, if we go back to the recent history when uh, Mr. Ayad and his group in uh, uh, previous elections have uh, been able to, been, uh, to have 
لكن للأسف كان هناك تعامل من إيران وللأسف أيضا من الولايات المتحدة ليبقى على نور المالكي كرئيس وزراء أنا في تصوري أن هناك كانت الأمور بدأت تسير من مسار الغلق لأنه بوجود نور المالكي الذي اتبع سياسة منفح إن لم تكن مضطهدة وهي في الأحوار مضطهدة لمعظم المواطنين من المذهب السني اختلف مع أخواننا الأكراد في الشمال على أمور جوهرية فجعل من العراق مركز إدارة عصابة للاستفادة من أموال العراق ومن تهنيش مجتمع العراق في اتخاذ القرار السياسي هذا الذي جعل المواطنين في الأنبار وفي مناطق أخرى من العراق إن لم يكون لديهم تعاطف مع فاحش على الأقل يسكتون عن ما تفعل بينهم ويتقبلون ما يأتيهم من فاحش أفضل من ما يأتيهم من نور المالكي لو الأخ أياد ومجموعة كانوا انتخبوا في ذلك الحين وتولوا إدارة الأمور الأمور هناك حتكون في مسار أفضل بكثير من ناحية تصريح رئيس الوزراء البريطاني ينطلق من رؤية رئيس الوزراء البريطاني لكن في نظري أنا التعامل مع فاحش يتم بصفة التعامل مع أعراض المرض وليس المرض نفسه فاحش موجودة هنا بسبب الحكم الذي استبد به نور المالكي على الشعب العراقي فاحش موجودة في سوريا لأن بشار الأسد مستبد في حكم على الشعب السوري إذا كنا نريد أن نتخلص من فاحش يجب أن نعالج المرض الأساسي اللي هو في بغداد وفي دمشق ومن هذا المنطلق لدينا الآن برنامج أعلنته الحكومة العراقية الجديدة لمحاولة الجمع مرة ثانية بين المواطنين العراقيين سواسية فهذه اسمحي لي أكمل بس جملة واحدة هذه الحكومة علينا أن نحاسبها على فعلها وللشعب العراقي البداية في ذلك ولكن المجتمع الدولي أيضا مصلحة من أنه يكون في لنا مراقبة ومحاسبة لما يدور في العراق برنس تركي أقول أسك أن تستيك في الإنجليز هي الأفضل في الإنجليز وهذا الذي لا أكون الأول الذي يتحدث الإنجليز <laughs> Don't worry, I'll join you. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I have to justify to our Arab audience, but it's the official language of WEF. Uh, uh, Mr. Shawis, I think you will uh, speak in Arabic, uh, or do you prefer English, whatever is the... If I don't speak in Kurdish, then I am ready no, to speak in Arabic. No, but Kurdish. <laughs> no, that's difficult to admit. Uh, is it fair, Mr. Shawis, to, um, to say that Nur al-Maliki is the only problem of Iraq and his policies and his government led us to this. أنا أريد أن أعود إلى سؤالك الأول. I would like to go back to your first question. When you mentioned the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshmerga, and the fact that everyone is afraid of the Iraqi army, the Peshm
تضر بشكل أكبر بكثير أو تؤثر بشكل أكبر بكثير مما تستطيع الجيوش أو حتى تنظيمات أخرى موجودة الكيامية لهذا نرى أن هذه الأساليب وهذه الطرق التي تستعملها يستعملها المهاجمين أدت إلى حصول وضع غير طبيعي في العراق على الأشياء لكن المهم هنا هو أن ننظر إلى العراق بأن أحد أسباب أحد أسباب ظهور التنظيمات الإرهابية وخاصة ما حصل في الموصل وليس الموصل فقط إنما في كافة المناطق السنية من العراق كان بالدرجة الأولى بنتيجة ما جرى في العراق بشكل عام وليس خطأ شخص واحد خطأ توجه أو هناك توجه خاطئ هذا التوجه أدى إلى تشكيل بيئة ملائمة استفادت من الإرهاب استفادت من الإرهاب وهذه البيئة نتجت عن, عن ممارسات وسياسات خاطئة ناجمة عن توجهات باتجاه احتكار السلطة والتمسك بالسلطة من قبل طرف واحد أو مكون واحد الحقيقة في العراق العراق لا يمكن كبلد متعدد المكونات معدد القوميات والأديان لا يمكن أن يحكم من طرف مكون واحد بل العراق يجب ومن الممكن أن يستمر كالعراق عندما يكون حكمه متمثل بكافة مكوناته على أساس شراكة حقيقية وواقعية We've just witnessed the first combat uh, on the ground, direct combat between coalition forces, specifically Canadians, and ISIS. Uh, it, it happened a few days ago. Uh, does this prove the theory that those air raids are not enough and to liberate Iraq from ISIS, the world and Iraqis and Syrians will need foreign boots on the ground. Listen, we're providing uh, some capacity building and training uh, for the Kurdish uh, Peshmerga forces. Uh, I think we've come a long way in a few short months. Uh, they um, were engaged and uh, responded uh, accordingly. Um, I don't think that there's any one answer to the challenge. Uh, His Royal Highness can call it what he does. I call it a cult, uh, a barbaric death cult. Um, but we really need to take a, a multi-pronged approach. The combat mission, I think, is important. So, too, is uh, a genuine, inclusive government with an inclusive program uh, out of Baghdad. We've seen progress to date. We should acknowledge uh, that from the new government. More needs to be done. Uh, we must continue to go after the financing uh, of Daesh. We must continue uh, to um, continue to stop foreign fighters uh, from going in. Uh, there's a wide range of things we do need to do, but uh, we must attack the, um, the sectarianism which has been um, exacerbated by the past government in uh, Baghdad and uh, by other states uh, or another state and uh, the other non-state actors. To me, though, it is tremendously important that the average, I mean, I think the, um, the Kurds uh, have the KRG, uh, they have a structure. So there's been greater progress, I think, uh, with the Kurds in recent months. Uh, we need to see that same progress with the Sunnis uh, as well. Uh, that's more challenging, but the average Sunni has got to feel a greater yes, attachment to but, their state. I mean, I, I was going to come to that, but allow me to, to interfere here because I just came out of Kurdistan and I was at the out, outskirts of Mosul and I saw the Peshmerga. I was embedded with them and it's a bit exaggerated uh, this help, international help to Al Peshmerga and to Kurds. I haven't seen very developed weapons and uh, we haven't seen a lot of foreign advisors on the ground. Uh, so, what's really happening there? Listen, I mean, we've, you know, there are Canadian trainers on the ground. Um, I'm sure there's always more that can be done. We've also brought in, with heavy lift capacity, uh, a lot of ammunition uh, to support uh, the Kurdish Peshmerga. Um, I think in the West, you know, we'd like to see immediate gratification. We'd like to see uh, significant results quickly. Uh, this didn't develop overnight. It won't be uh, successfully tackled overnight. Uh, but I think if we continue mm -hmm. uh, this, a sustained multi-pronged <clears throat> approach, we will meet uh, with uh, success. Dr. Alawi, all this money that has been spent on the Iraqi army since 2003, uh, all the training, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, why did the Iraqi more, army... More, more, more. Uh, 
I, I just want to be humble about the numbers. But let me let me go back to His Excellency the Ambassador. Uh, I believe uh, the war against Daesh requires uh, a intelligence pooling of intelligence information to identify the weaknesses and strengths of Daesh, ISIS. Secondly, I think we need special forces to conduct uh, operations, surgical operations, to hit at the command and control of ISIS. We have to recognize now that ISIS is spreading. It's not localized now. It's not in Iraq and Syria only. It's spreading to Lebanon. It's spreading to Libya. As far as Libya, it's spreading to Yemen. And the fight in Iraq is essential to break the back of these uh, terrorist extremists, because otherwise the whole region will be engulfed. Unfortunately, the, all the help that came from uh, our friends and allies in the world uh, was not uh, useful, but not to the extent that one can get rid of vices. I think the, the key issue here is how we bring the people around to support fighting ISIS. Can you do it without the Sunni tribes? No. It's not the tribes only in Sunni areas. I, I beg to differ with our friend, uh, the ambassador. I think the Sunnis are disenfranchised. I think the Sunnis, what they see now of the uh, deployment of uh, militia forces and what they see in the ethnic cleansing and sectarian cleansing that is taking place, and the fleeing of uh, other uh, components of the Iraqi people, such as Christians and Yazidis, is not going to be encouraging to the, the Sunnis to take part in yes, fighting ISIS. Yes, but Sunnis ISIS. themselves are also uh, suffering from uh, sectarian cleansing. Yeah, th th this militias, Shiites, backed by but Iran, not on the hand are of also ISIS. going into Sunni villages and committing atrocities. Yes, exactly. This is what I'm well, saying. a tribe has been wiped out nearly. No, the, the, in, in certain areas, uh, almost uh, the Transparency International, I think, quoted 130,000 houses have been uh, uh, seized by the militias of Sunnis, taken over by Sunnis. So the Sunnis, they have to buy into fighting ISIS. What is happening on the, in the theater, in the, in the practicality of, of, of daily life? The Sunnis are being alienated more and more every day, not only Sunnis, but other components, with the exception of Kurdistan, which is harboring now what 1.6 uh, million uh, refugees, displaced people. So it is very difficult without gaining the support of the people, without all the people, Shias, Sunnis, uh, Christians, whatever. Uh, it's going to be very extremely difficult to fight Daesh mm -hmm. on military f f grounds only. Mm -hmm. Militarily, uh, we know very well that uh, foot soldiers are required, and foot soldiers that are required should be special forces uh, soldiers. Foreign? Western? No, no, Iraqi. Iraqi, but special forces. Would you accept that Western forces would participate? No, we don't accept Western forces. But you keep Western hearing forces, those quotes well, that the Iraqis are not ready, not well, efficient, no, not the, incapable of handling No, the Iraqis are ready, but the, 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 the political landscape was not helpful to Iraqis to fight uh, extremism. Mm -hmm. In fact, the environment, the political environment was such as inviting uh, extremism to Iraq rather than uh, expelling extremism. That's why Daesh came to Iraq, because Iraq became a soft, soft spot for extremism. Since the dismantlement of the state of Iraq, since uh, the dismantlement of the army, of the police, of the intelligence, Iraq was rendered uh, incapable of doing anything. Mm -hmm. And then the pacification was introduced, then sectarianism was introduced. And this brought and invited a lot of regional powers to, to intervene in Iraq and to interfere in Iraq. Who are these regional powers? Uh, so some, of course, regional powers, uh, including Iran, as uh, per the uh, statement of the uh, deputy of Mr. Qasim Soleimani, who said that we have armies are fighting in Iraq and we are the, in control of the political environment in Iraq, which is wrong. It shouldn't be said in this way, uh, although we know that a lot of militias are being supported. But also there are uh, yes. popular people who have joined the struggle against ISIS who do not belong to Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, the army, unfortunately, was, was denied of its uh, national character. It used to be a professional army. Uh, it was dismantled. I retrieved the army. 
and then it was dismantled almost again. Mm -hmm. So really, the army did not have any reason to fight. Yes, but Prince Turkey, uh, with uh, your military experience, and also taking a closer look at the landscape, political landscape of uh, the intelligence one. I'm glad you corrected that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> my military experience was, the, uh, yeah. was confined to volunteering during the Suez War for a, th a three-month training course when I was in school. Uh, you were when the head Egypt, of intellig Saudi intelligence and that's which has a nothing, powerful apparatus has in the Middle Semi-intelligence, semi-military. Okay, uh, so with this and also taking a closer mm. look at the political landscape in, uh, uh, in Iraq, do they need, do Iraqis need a new social pact? Is it the army that has a problem or the political system, um, the lack of inclusive policies, um, uh, a new social pact, a new uh, probably consensus? لا يفتوى مالك في المدينة. Two Maliks we have with us here uh, who, who have said already that Iraq needs a global reconstruction. It's not just the armed forces, it's the whole political structure. But when you mention military, let me just refer you to back to what you said about the British Prime Minister's statement. A curious and very ironic situation we have in both Iraq and Syria is that the coalition, and there is a coalition, fighting Fahish. In Syria, it is the United States and the Arab countries, Saudi Arabia, UAE, um, Bahrain, and some contributions from Qatar. And that's it. In Iraq, the coalition is... And Jordan also. And Jordan, sorry. In, in Iraq, the coalition is the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, the UK, France, Belgium, you name it. What, do you, what are you trying to tell us? I'm trying to say that you can't fight a battle with such an improperly organized campaign where you think one front can only be handled by one group of, of uh, partners and another front handled by another. Why are the Europeans reluctant to bomb Fahish in Syria? They refuse to do it. I asked Europeans why, nobody answered me. And I know why we're not in the coalition in Iraq. It's because the Iraqi government, the present one, under Abadi, doesn't want Arab contribution to fight Fahish in Iraq. They accept Iranian contribution, but not Arab contribution. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things you have to fix with Abadi. So you and want you more Saudi Iraqis. involvement in Iraq? Well, not just Saudi. This is a battle for all of us. When, you know, there is a, a refrain, we heard it after September 11th, 2001, and now it's coming back, which is the clash of civilizations. Today, we are in a clash for civilization. These people that we are fighting, Fahish, are obscene. That's what the word means in Arabic. They kill the innocent, they rape women, they enslave men and women, they teach their children how to chop people's heads off. <clears throat> that is unacceptable. It's an assault on all of us. And to separate between commands in Iraq and commands in Syria and different measures taken in France or in the UK or or uh, Madrid or wherever you want. That's what Ayad Alawi was referring to, that we must share intelligence on these issues. These people operate, you see them recruiting people from everywhere. How come? The, there are states, there are governments that should yes. be preventing yes. that, that activity, mm -hmm. but because they're not sharing whatever knowledge they have or because of reluctance to operate on one front and not the other, we're in this mess. Allow me to take a short break and uh, come back uh, to this discussion about uh, Iraq and Syria. Okay, let's continue.
يلا ريدي Hello and welcome back to Davos uh, debate. I'm Rima Mektabi and uh, welcome to our guests. Uh, I will um, ask a couple of questions uh, to my guests and then go back to your questions. Uh, if you would like to participate in this uh, debate, please get ready. Uh, Mr. Baird, uh, uh, ISIS uh, has brought down the borders between Iraq and Syria. Probably it's accurate to say it's uh, Syriac. For ISIS, it's just one, probably one body. Uh, uh, for them. Uh, are we going to witness a spillover? Uh, we've seen some of this spillover probably in Europe uh, and some parts of uh, Yemen uh, and also Libya and in the Middle East. Are you dreading a, a worse scenario for 2015? You know, listen, I think we've got to recognize that um, the terrorism inflicting, uh, inflicted on the uh, Syrian people on the, uh, against the Iraqi people uh, will lead to violence elsewhere. Um, uh, a gunman stormed our parliament, was killed 15 meters from where I was uh, he, on October the 22nd, while not directed, uh, certainly inspired uh, by Daesh. So uh, this is um, a, a global phenomenon that requires a global response. I think we've got to understand, just as fascism and communism are great struggles that uh, the last century had to confront. Uh, this type of uh, terrorism, extremism, uh, is, the, uh, is the struggle for this century, and we've got to confront it uh, as such. That's why we've got to attack its propaganda. We've got to attack um, those that would seek to radicalize others, um, in addition to the, uh, the efforts going on uh, in Iraq and Syria. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shawis, there's a general impression in Kurdistan, and I felt it a little bit, that probably now Kurdistan is closer to having its own state with what's happening in Iraq. Sunnis might want their own federation, uh, and uh, probably this will uh, facilitate Kurds to have their own state, and uh, probably Shiites will have uh, their own federation in Iraq. Is this possible at all? Of course, I have mentioned that Iraq is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious country. For Iraq to remain united, it is necessary for each of these components to feel justice and equality on the basis of uh, the sharing of power, participation in power in a real and true manner, so that uh, all the people would feel that they own the country, they live in the country, and their interests uh, are in this country. On this basis, uh, we have drafted the Iraqi constitution. الدستور العراقي الذي سرت عليه فرية الشعب العراقي على 80% من أبناء الشعب العراقي على الرغم من ملابسات المجالس نجح في الاستفتاء وأيدته الدستور this constitution has uh, laid the basis for real solutions uh, to the problems of Iraq and challenges faced by Iraq. So Iraq could remain what do Kurds now want? What do Kurds now want? Do you still still need a state? بالتأكيد بالتأكيد. Yes, of course. الكرد ك the Kurds, as a big group in the region that amount to approximately 40 million people, have the right, like all the peoples of the world, to have their own state and their own status. But at the same time, the Kurds in the Iraqi Kurdistan, through the Iraqi constitution, has chosen to work for a united democratic Iraq. They still strive in this direction, proof to that that is the active participation of uh, Kurdish uh, uh, figures uh, in the government uh, in Baghdad. Dr. Alawi, will you tell me what you told me on the plane? Wallahi, that it's not the time for a Kurdish yeah, state. I, I'll say it now, but uh, let me first uh, thank uh, His Excellency the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Canada 
for the help they have provided to Iraq, uh, both logistics and, and weapons, yeah. especially to Beishmarga. Regarding Kurdish state? Le regarding Is it Kurdistan, the time? Uh, no, I, sp I spoke to, uh, we have lots of friends in Kurdistan. Uh, I agree with, uh, with Kaka Roj that they ultimately would want to have a, a state. When? But the president of Kurdistan, of the region of Kurdistan, I had a fr very frank discussion with him. And he said that the time is not right now. I told him the time is not right, uh, right now. And he agreed that this is not, not the time to separate and to dismember Iraq. And let me also add by saying that the Kurdish uh, uh, region is voluntarily part of the Iraqi uh, state, the state of Iraq. Uh, they, uh, they need to be uh, seen as real partners in, in, in Iraq. So with a better relationship with Baghdad government, there's no need for a separation? No, no, I, I, I believe so. I believe ultimately if, if we do the, the real uh, mixing of, of an justice in, in Iraq and uh, uh, produce a, a, a oil and gas law and a revenue sharing law mm -hmm. and get the Kurds to be part of Iraq, I don't think they'll be thinking of separating because voluntarily they were part and parcel and still are part and parcel of Iraq. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, unfortunately, the governments, the successive governments in Iraq, probably the, with the exception of my government, was very bad to the Kurds, was very... Unfortunately uh, for a short time. <coughs> Yes. But, uh, but there were uh, a lot of atrocities committed against the Kurds. Yes. And, uh, of course, this pushed the Kurds to the, yes. to the corner. So, so it's not the time. Prince, uh, Prince, not the time, no, no. Prince and, and Mr. Barazani also indicated to me, and they agreed with me, that it's not the time to, to have a state. Mm, he told me something else. But what on camera, I, I you? <laughs> Tell me what I told you. It was on camera for our viewers. <laughs> uh, Prince Turkey, let's look at the big picture. Kurds want their own state, not only in uh, Iraq, Iraq, parts of Syria. They're the largest uh, ethnic minority in uh, Turkey. Uh, Syria doesn't look the same. Assad is probably a president for the Alawite uh, region and some of Damascus. Iraq, uh, the Sunnis may want to ask for their own federation. Are we, in, are we facing a new Sykes-Picot or a new Middle East? The borders are becoming different? I hope not. Um, I agree with Ayad Alawi when he says that this is not the time for separation. Because if you start that ball rolling, it's not going to stop. And not only is it not going to stop, it's going to create conflict. You mentioned the Kurds in Turkey. You mentioned the Kurds in Iran, in Syria. And is it just the Kurds? If you go down to the smaller components of these societies, you can break them down into tribes, into sub-tribes, and so on. And I think if we want more trouble, this is the time to do it now. If we want peace and stability, this is the time to take this gentleman's advice and say that Iraq is composed of different ethnic and sectarian compositions and they should remain united. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to mention here, Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, known to the West as Saladin, he was a Kurd. He established a dynasty within the Abbasid Empire called the Ayyubid dynasty that lasted for 200 years, having unified all of the Levant and the Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, Syria, present Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, parts of present-day Turkey, Iraq, and so on, and Arabia, they were all under Kurdish rule at that time. Nobody not only didn't object, but they welcomed it because he liberated Jerusalem from the Crusaders. This is a historical fact, and I think many people among the non-Arabs and the non-Kurds, if you like, don't know how much that resonates 
within us as Arabs and as Kurds and yes. other components of the Middle East. And my point here is that if we have an Iraq that has all of its components under the same political rights and obligations, what's wrong with having, as already da exists, an Iraqi president who is Kurdish? Yes. Mr. Baird, you have a... I think, I think the barbaric evil that we're confronting demands a unity of purpose to confront that evil. That evil is, uh, the, the, the fuel that fires that evil is sectarianism, and the, the answer is pluralism, where people of different uh, backgrounds, faiths, ethnic origins uh, can live in peace and harmony. That's why it is so imperative that the central government in Baghdad deliver that kind of inclusive government for all citizens, Kurds, Sunnis, Christians, and others. Well, Mr. Al Abadi, is he capable of this? Will he be allowed to do that? I think if you give him an interim judgment, I think he's done well. I think more work remains to be done, but I think he's gotten off to a good start. Mm -hmm. I'd like to open the floor for questions, uh, and uh, please, if you'd like to participate, I'll uh, start with Mr. Janahi. Uh, if you can pass the phone, uh, please introduce yourself. And, uh, well, I promised him, Mr. Uh, Amr Musa, he, he, I had he, to... He wants to be Mr. Janahi, but he's not. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> A couple of people actually were asking, why do we have two people from Iraq on the panel? And since I don't know anything about politics or diplomacy, so I had to think a bit of logic. I said, well, because al Arabiya, they know something that we don't know, that Kurdistan will be independent very shortly. And he was confirming that. <laughs> I think whilst we talk, this is actually a very important session. Uh, two years ago, we had a similar session about Syria. At that time, we had 100,000 people being killed. And our focus was... Bashar al-Assad, he was the bad guy, everybody was going to Bashar al-Assad. There was no talk about Fahish, and actually I would love to see Mr. Obama how he's going to abbreviate Fahish. Uh, that would be an interesting thing. So, it, I mean, the things have changed ever since. Meanwhile, whilst we're having this discussion, there are 250,000 people dead, and they are increasing. We have half of Syria displaced. We have Mosul today, and I would like to bring this to uh, Mr. Yad Alawi, we have Muslims today who are the people apparently living in a much better situation than they were three years ago, four years ago. They have security, they have food, they sleep at night freely, they don't have problems. Which means Fahish is doing, apparently, from a people's perspective, a better job than the people before. What's the question? The question is, where are we going? I mean, we talked two years ago, this was a proxy war. I think without the regional powers coming together, how are we going to go forward? Why are we going to be in two years down the road, 500,000 dead? Mr. Bashar al-Assad is still there, and still we're having Mosul, Erbil, whatever, whatever, coming under Fahaj. Briefly, thank you. Mr. Alawi, please. Uh -huh. the, the question is yours, but the, yeah, thank briefly. You. Well, anyway, uh, ISIS is, is getting stronger. Uh, it's uh, not true that they have lost uh, control in Syria and are losing control in Iraq. They are spreading. Let us face the facts as they are. Uh, we have a very venomous, uh, uh, with, full with venom, people who want to, to die for a cause. And opposite them, there are uh, theaters which are not uh, intact, theaters, uh, political landscapes which are dented, full with problems, uh, and uh, of course they are finding their own way. They are now rising in Libya because there is a breakdown in law and order. They are working in Yemen because there is a breakdown in law and order. And indeed, they, are, they have targeted the soft spot, which is Iraq. And, uh, and uh, without really an effort to, to, to get things moving by developing a strategy, a structured strategy to, to face ISIS, not only in Iraq and Syria, globally, uh, then I think it wouldn't work, uh, that we cannot control ISIS. The war will continue, and as it continues, it will develop more and more uh, people will be recruited by but ISIS. Would this, would this mean ousting Assad, a uh, major political change in Iraqi system, political system? Probably the GCC country is taking certain taking certain drastic steps. Uh, reform, reforms. 
political uh, reforms. No, I'm talking about the GCC probably stopping the flow of some of its, of its uh, nationals into Syria. Well, like Kuwait has been probably hesitant to take some of these steps. Um, the international community also is changing some measures. We don't have a, a strategy, a collective strategy in the Arab world. We don't have an, a collective strategy in the Islamic world. Mm -hmm. We don't have a collective strategy in the world at large. I know that there are sports here and there of uh, helping Iraq, of giving some arms, of training some people. But I am talking here about the strategy which is facing the world. Yes. We have seen what happened in France. Uh, it's it's uh, inspired by ISIS. And ISIS is hitting very hard. And today we met with our Libyan brothers and they are talking about the presence of ISIS in Libya. Yes. <coughs> Let me pass uh, more questions to the audience and we'll just collect a few questions and have the answers. The lady in the, uh, on the first front, <coughs> first row. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Bewar from Kurdistan and I'm with the Global Shapers. Uh, well, my question is uh, directed to most of you. And the thing that I want to address is that uh, sometimes, actually, in my eyes, I can see that the main problem with Iraq is the unity, actually, the, the unity that everyone claims that we have to keep. Because we all know that during Saddam Hussein, like the unity was unified, like Iraq was unified, and the force, right? Like she is the, the didn't have any right, Kurdish didn't have any right. But when Saddam was out of power, we could see that like there was civil war, everyone wanted to, like, to have a part of Iraq. So don't you think that the unity is actually the problem of Iraq? Don't you think that like, it's the poison, the poison to Iraq, the, the unity that we all claim that, yes, Iraq should be united? If the, it is really the solution, so what are the tools to yes. actually make Iraq united? What are the tools that you, you can think of in a long term to make Iraq actually united and keep everyone happy? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll also pass the microphone, please, to the lady. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Star Alawi. Um, I have a question for... <laughs> She's your daughter, but I decided to give her a chance anyway. <laughs> no, I was going to say, for anyone who didn't realize, I'm, Dr. Alawi is my father. What's your um, question? I have a question for His uh, Royal Highness, um, Turkey El Faisal. Uh, you spoke of um, the, the Iraqi, this Iraqi government and that it should be held accountable. Um, by the Iraqi people and also by the international community. Uh, clearly so, because um, the international community has been dismissive of Iraq in the last few years and its, warning, uh, and its early warning signs, which have resulted in instability, not just in Iraq, but in the region. How will such accountability be in, in, uh, implemented um, to curb such contagion uh, spreading? Ms. Turkey. Thank you. You said you wanted to ask some questions, but anyway, I'll, I'll take this. How did this pr present government come to, to power? It was through the work of Iraqis, but also <coughs> through the work of the international community. Um, the mainstay for Nouri al-Maliki when he was in power were not the Iraqi people. They were mostly the support that he was getting from Iran on one side and from the United States and European governments on the other side. And it, when that support disappeared from Nouri al-Maliki, you had the opportunity of the formation of a national unity government that includes opponents or former opponents of Nouri al-Maliki, maybe still are, and others who um, will contribute, obviously, hopefully, to the betterment of the situation in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Iraq. And that's what I meant by holding this present government accountable. Because what happens in Iraq, as Dr. Alawi said, affects all of us. Yes. And so we need to be watching and telling our Iraqi friends in government that if they don't do things right, then the international community has a responsibility to advise them and to hopefully work with them in overcoming whatever yes. difficulties Mr. Baird, quickly please, I'd like you to answer the question of the lady at the front row, uh, row uh, about the unity. Looking from a Western point of view, do you think that the Iraqis need to revise their whole political system? I think it's uh, the evil that they've got to confront must take priority. 
it is immediate and all the energy should be going into confronting that. And to confront that, they need uh, to have uh, a government that governs for uh, every Iraqi. Um, not just an inclusive government with an inclusive program, but people have got to feel that on the ground. I, I think, uh, as I said, I think they've made good, good success with the Kurdish population. I think more work remains to be done with the Sunnis. Um, but that is tremendously important. We've got to, if there's any, um, any sympathy or goodwill that uh, the average Sunni family may have for Daesh on the ground, we yes. must obviously seek to, to pull them away. I'll, I'll open the floor for a couple of more questions, and then we will discuss the regional influence. I just uh, want to quickly, please. Uh, comment on uh, His Royal Highness Prince Turkey's uh, statement. Uh, the all uh, groups, political groups in Iraq and parliamentary groups, have agreed on a roadmap forward. And this roadmap, uh, nothing of this roadmap has been implemented as far until now. And we hope that this is going to be the, the, uh, the issue that would transform Iraq from where it was to something solid mm -hmm. and united. Yes. But we are looking forward to the implementation of this roadmap that all parties have agreed to. And we'll see, and those who are holding the government accountable, if they are going to agree on this because they have signed their roadmap. Yes. Please, uh, can you pass the mic to the gentleman in the third floor, row? Thank you. Uh, Peter Goodman with the International Business Times. Uh, for Vice President Alawi, is your government now sharing intelligence with the Saudis? And if not, why not? You mean the Iraq government is not sharing intelligence with anybody, in fact, only with the, a bit with the British and a bit with the Americans. But uh, I, I, as far as me is concerned, uh, what my information says, that there is no sharing of intelligence with the Arab countries. As yet, mm -hmm. uh, for this is uh, this is the, the cause, and I think uh, this is the case. I think uh, this is when I spoke about pooling intelligence, which is very important. It's not happening until now; it's not taking place. Uh, why not? <laughs> why not? Because there is no will to 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 pull the information. Uh, and uh, the, the international uh, allies also are not party to the, to the information, to pooling the intelligence. Uh, there is no intelligence gathering uh, at all in, 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 in yes. the region. Dr. Alawi, allow me to open the floor for more questions. Uh, I don't know if anyone from this side would like to participate. There's also someone at the back, this side. My name, we got the live mic, yes we do. Um, I'm Grenville Byford, I'm a writer. Um, it seems to me that there's an empty chair here that might be uh, occupied by the Iranians. And I'd like to ask His Royal Highness a question. Could Saudi Arabia cooperate with the Iranians on this issue? And if so, on what basis? Uh, I'll pass also the floor for more questions because we'll be discussing the regional influence in Iraq. Uh, there's a lady in the second floor, in the second row, here. Thank you. I am Omzin Khalifa from Tunisia, and I would like to tell you that uh, all what's happening in Syria and Iraq not only affecting uh, you, but obviously us in Tunisia, because our brothers and sisters are being slaughtered, but also because our youth that are um, hopeless think that they can go and fight in Daesh, uh, better than stay and live peacefully in uh, my country. Um, we are hearing, hearing a lot about security and military answers um, to fight terrorism. This is, uh, to me, like trying to contain a vase that is, uh, has already overflowed. It's definitely necessary. But in parallel, are we trying to think uh, what are the profound reasons of why a terrorist becomes a terrorist? Why does a young Arab think that it's better to go and die yes. for Daesh? Yes. And I think that uh, why it is, we have such illness in our all societies yes. that produce, uh, Thank you. predisposes young people to be brainwashed. Thank you. I think we need to think globally, but act in uh, our every context. Thank you. I'm running context. out of time. Thanks Thank a lot you. for your 
Uh, question, uh, we have five minutes and I would need a quick answer from each one of you. Prince Turkey, the regional influence. So why don't uh, the, Sa the Saudis and the Iranians sit together and talk and maybe that's probably for the better of the region? When the gentleman asked the question, before we came on this stage, I asked our moderator, why isn't there an Iranian representative? And she said, they refused to come. And basically, that is the fault, not of Saudi Arabia, but of Iran. And basically, that is the problem that we have with Iran. The kingdom has always extended a hand of friendship to Iran and to the Iranian people. If you look back on all of our um, um, engagements with, with Iran, and more recently with the Rouhani government, when he was elected, the king sent him a congratulatory note. An invitation was extended to his foreign minister to come and visit. He never did. And his excuse was <coughs> that if I don't meet the king, I'm not coming. Well, too bad. You didn't meet the king, so you didn't come. But if you wanted good relations with us, we'll be happy to talk with you. Yes. Finally, he met with our foreign minister in New York. and. I imagine, and I wasn't present at the meeting, that they exchange lists of complaints about what each country is doing to the other. And I think Iranian engagement is important, but they have to show seriousness in meeting our concerns. Our concerns are, as Dr. Alawi said, the deputy to General Soleimani boasting that he has armies in four Arab countries that they control four Arab capitals. This is public statements by Iranian officials. Yes. It's not something that I invented or that came out on the internet with no reference. So that is the problem with how Iran interacts with us and how we would like to see them remove their presence from the Arab countries because they're an instigator of trouble. They're not pacifiers there. Thank They're you. They're instigators of trouble. Thank you, Prince Turkey. A word for Mr. Baird. I have great respect for the uh, Iranian people. Um, they have a great history and can play a, a big role in the region and internationally. But, um, you know, the current regime in Tehran is playing a very negative and destructive role in just about every single country in the region. Their material uh, and tangible support for uh, Assad has led to uh, tens of thousands of people being killed. Their influence in Iraq has been, uh, to be charitable, incredibly negative. Um, their material support for terrorism uh, throughout the region is incredibly destabilizing. Uh, we'd, we'd extend the hand to uh, uh, the government in Tehran if they choose to take a different approach, a different approach um, to, uh, to foreign relations, but they're part of the problem, not part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shawis, uh, is it a proxy war? Uh, Mr. Janahi mentioned a proxy war. Uh, you obviously, we've, we've discussed all the problems within the Iraqi society, but uh, we cannot deny that the influence, the regional influence, and the balance of power is shifting and changing uh, currently. Is it a proxy war? In Iraq, I believe that Iraq is facing a number of specific challenges uh, these days. The first challenge is terrorism. The second challenge is our humanitarian crisis. We have huge numbers of IDPs and refugees. And the third challenge is the uh, decrease in oil prices. These are tremendous challenges facing Iraq nowadays, in addition to all those challenges that we have inherited from the previous regime. That is why I say that Iraq as a country needs political stability. Iraq needs mutual understanding between its different political factions and between its different constituents and components. And we need cooperation with all countries in the region and in the world. The last word is you. I just have a couple of minutes only. Well, I think... Will Iraq be at peace without a regional stability without real no 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 dialogue. this is where we uh, the when iraq was undermined uh, the region went past all of the region and uh, it was followed by of course uh, syria and now egypt unfortunately egypt is reviving itself tunisia have revived itself 
but we still have a major problem in the region, and, and we have to deal with each other whether we like it or not. And that's why I personally have called, and I'm convincing the Iraqi government to call for a regional conference to sit down and look everybody in the face and say what is wrong and what is right and assure and listen to, the, uh, to their uh, anxieties and also they have to listen to our anxieties. Without this, I think the, the, the region is going to be uh, explos exploding more than it is now and all countries will be engulfed by the fire. Uh, and that's, I think it's high time now for the whole region to get together and sit down and talk reasonably without hesitation and to find solutions based on two pillars. The first is non-interference and respecting uh, sovereignty, not interference in internal matters. And secondly, the balanced uh, benefits and trading special, benefits. Special These, thanks uh, to my guests and to you for uh, joining us and uh, to our viewers. We were with you uh, from Davos and we discussed this uh, Iraq and Syria, the strategic uh, context. Thank you for watching.